Good day everyone, I am Perlisa A. Rivera, your discussant for today. We are going to discuss all about aviation. Let's first define aviation. Aviation is a term that refers to the design, development, production, operation, and use of aircraft. When did the aviation started? This time we will go in to discuss the brief history of aviation. The history of aviation has extended over more than 2,000 years from the earliest attempts in kites and gliders to power the heavier tanier, supersonic, and hypersonic flight. The first form of man-made flying objects were kites. The earliest known record of kite flying is from around 200 BC in China when a general flew a kite over enemy territory to calculate the length of tunnel required to enter the region. From a mythology, human ambition to fly is illustrated in mythological literature of several cultures. Everyone knows about the wings made up of wax, the Delus in Greek mythology, or the Pushpaka Vimana of King Ravana in Ramayana, for an instance. Early attempts, the flight automation in Greece around 400 BC, Archytas, the Greek philosopher, mathematician, astronomer, statesman, and strategist, designed and built a bird-shaped, apparently steamed, powered model named the Pigeon, or in Greek it is Peristera, which is said to have flown some 200 meters. According to Aulus Galeus, the mechanical bird was suspended on a string or pivot and was powered by a concealed aura or spirit. Hot air balloons, gliders, and kites in China, the Kongming Lantern or the Proto Hot Air Balloon was known in China from ancient times. Its invention is usually attributed to the General Su Liang in 180 to 234 AD, honorific title Kongming, who is said to have used them to scare the enemy troops. An oil lamp was installed under a large paper bag and the bag floated in the air due to the lump heating in the air. The enemy was frightened by the light in the air, thinking that some divine force was helping him. Manned Kite Yuang Hongwang Tu Ye, the first man kite glide to take off from a tower, 559 during the Yuan dynasty or the 13th century. Under rulers like Kublai, the rectangular lamps became popular in festivals when they would attract huge crowds during the Mongol Empire. The design may have spread along the Silk Route into Central Asia and the Middle East. Gliders in Europe In the 9th century, at the age of 65, the Muslim Andalusian polymat Abbas ibn Firnas is said to have flown from the hill Jabal al-Arus by employing a rudimentary glider. While alighting again on the place whence he had started, he eventually crashed and sustained injury which some contemporary critics attributed to a lack of tail. Between 1000 and 1010, the English Benedictine monk Ilmer of Malsmiller Malmesbury flew for about 200 meters using a glider, but he too sustained injuries. The event is recorded in the work of the eminent medieval historian William of Malmesbury in about 1125. Being a fellow monk in the same abbey, William almost certainly obtained his account directly from people there who knew Ilmer himself. 
From Renaissance to the 18th century, some six centuries after Ibn Firmas, Leonardo da Vinci developed a hang glider design in which the inner parts of the wings are fixed and some control surfaces are provided towards the tips, as in the gliding flight in birds. A model he built for a test flight in, 19, in 1496 rather did not fly, and some other designs such as four-person screw-type helicopter have severe flaws. These are the examples of Leonardo da Vinci's projects. An Italian inventor, Tito Livio Borotini, invited by the Polish king Vladislaw IV to his court in Warsaw, built a modern aircraft with four fixed glider wings in 1647, described as four pairs of wings attached to an elaborate or a dragon, it was said to have successfully lifted a cat in 1648, but not Buratini himself. He promised that only the most minor injuries would result from landing the craft. His dragon volant is considered the most elaborate and sophisticated aeroplane to be built before the 19th century. This is the sample, or this is rather the Brutanese dragon volant. In 1670, Francesco Lana de Terzi published work that suggested lighter than air flight would be possible by having copper foil spears that contain a vacuum that would be lighter than the displaced air, lift an airship rather literal from his drawing. While not being completely off the mark, he did fail to realize that the pressure of the surroundings air would crush the spears. This is an example of Francesco Lana de Terzi design for a lighter than an airship. In 1709, Bartolome de Guzmao presented a petition to King John V of Portugal begging for support for his invention of an airship, in which he expressed the greatest confidence. The public test of the machine which was set for January 24, 1709, did not take place. It is certain that Guzmao was working on his principle at the public exhibition he gave before the court on August 8, 1709, in the hall of the Casa de India in Lisbon, when he propelled a ball to the roof by combustion. Let's now move on to the modern flight, lighter than air. In 1783 was a watershed year for ballooning and aviation. Between June 4 and December 1, five aviation firsts were achieved in France. On 4, 4th of June, the Montgolfier brothers demonstrated their unmanned hot air balloon at Anonai, France. On 27th of August, Jacques Charles and Robert brothers launched the world's first unmanned or hydrogen-filled balloon from the Champ de Mars, Paris. On the 19th of October, the Montgolfiers launched the first manned flight, a tethered balloon with humans on board, at the Folly Titon in Paris. The aviators were the scientist Jean-Francois Pilatier de Rezuir, the manufacturer manager of Jean Baptiste Reveal and Grau de Valiet. On November 21, the Montgolfiers launched the first free flight with human passengers. King Louis XVI had originally decreed that condemned criminals would be the first pilots, but Jean Francois Plettier de Rocher, along with the Mar Marcus Francois de Alandre, successfully petitioned for the honor. On 1st of December, Jacques Charles and Nicolas Louis Robert launched their manned hydrogen balloon from the Jardin de Tuileries 
in Paris amid a crowd of 400,000. After Robert alighted, Charles decided to dis ascend alone. This time, he ascended rapidly to an altitude about 3,000 meters where he saw the sun again, suffered extreme pain in his ears, and never flew again. These are the pictures of the hot air balloons in modern times. The first one is the first public demonstration in An Anone in, the Ju in June 4, 7, 8, 1783. Second one, the world's first manned hydrogen balloon flight in 1783. Third one is the launching of the balloon on October 19, 783. Next is the first untethered voyage of Pilar de Luzur in November 21, 1783. Then, the last one is the contemporary illustration of the first flight of Prop Jacques Charles and Nicolas Louis Robert in December 1, 1783. Ballooning became a major rage in Europe in the late 18th century, providing the first detailed understanding of the relationship between altitude and the atmosphere. Non-steerable balloons were employed during the American Civil War by the Union Army Balloon Corps. The young Ferdinand von Zeppelin first flew as a balloon passenger with the Union Army of the Potomac in 1863. Another advance was made in 1884 when the first fully controllable free flight was made in French Army electric-powered airship, La France by Charles Renard and Arthur Krebs. The first picture shows that the 1884 La France, or the first fully controllable airship, and the second one is the navigable balloon created by Gifford in 1852. Heavier than air. During the last year of the 18th century, Sir George Cayley started the first rigorous study of the physics of flight. In 1799, he exhib exhibited a plan for a glider, which except for a platform was completely modern in having a separate tail for control and having the pilot suspended below the center of gravity to provide stability, and flew it as a model in 1804. Later, Cayley turned his research to building a full-scale version of his design. First flying it and man in 1849 and in 1853. In 1848, John Stringfellow made a successful indoor test flight of a steam-powered model in charred Somerset, England. In 1856, Frenchman Jean-Marie Lebris made the first flight higher than his point of departure by having his glider El, Ab Ab El Abatros Artificial pulled by a horse on a beach. In 1866, John Rick, a, po a Polish peasant, sculptors and carpenter, is alleged to have built a flown, a controllable glider. Rick's claim are largely based on a local oral tradition. The Francis Herbert Wenham built a series of uns unsuccessful unmanned gliders. He presented a paper on his work to the newly formed Aeronautical Society of Great Britain in 1866 and decided to prove it by building the world's first twin tunnel in 1871. In 1871, the Frenchman Alponce Penoud successfully flew a model of aircraft powered by a twisted rubber in Paris. In 1874, Felix du Temple built the monoplane, a large plane made of, of aluminum in Brest, France, with a wingspan of 13 meters and a weight of only 80 kilograms without the driver. Right. So this is the, the du Temple monoplane. And the next one is the patent drawing of the monoplane. This is the monoplane looks like. Let's go to about the history of aviation in Romania. 
Romania has a rich tradition in the aviation field. At the beginning of the 20th century, flight pioneers like Aurel Vlacu, Trainian Vayu, and George Valentin Bibescu brought important contribution to early aviation history, building revolutionary airplanes and changing the age mentalities. mentalities. In the present, the Romanian Civil Aeronautic Authority is the one overseeing the activities. Along the 20th century, Romania built in military aircraft the IAR-39 and IAR-80 before and during World War II and the IAR-93 and the IAR-99 swam since the 70s. Helicopters, IAR-316, IAR-330 under the aerospatial license as well as passenger aircraft Rombach 1 1-11 built under the British Aircraft Corporation's license. The industrial facilities for aircraft building and maintenance are located in Bacau or the Aerostores Brasov, Industria Aeronautica Romagna, Creova or the Avion Creova and the Bucheres or Roma Aero Turbo Mechanica. Dumitru Prun Prunariu is the only Romanian astronaut who participated in a space mission in Zoyus 40 to May 14, 1981. We are done with the history of aviation. Now, let's proceed to the aviation in science and technology. This time, we will go in to discuss who are the proponents of aviation. Let's first discuss the Newton's Law of Motion by Isaac Newton. Let's first... Uh, have a brief biography of Isaac Newton. Isaac Newton is one of the greatest scientists and mathematicians that ever lived. He was born in England on December 25, 1643. He was born the same year that Galileo died and he lived for 85 years. Newton had new ideas about the motion which he called his true laws of, three laws of motion rather. He also had ideas about gravity, the diffraction of light, and forces. And we were going to identify what is the connection of the Newton's three laws of motion to the aviation. Okay, we were going to discuss the three laws of motion. The first one is the Newton's law of universal gravitation. All objects not fall with the same acceleration unless air resistance or some other forces acts on them where all bodies experience a downward gravitational force exerted by Earth's mass, the force experienced as weight. The Newton's second law. Acceleration is produced when a force acts on a mass. The greater the mass, or of the object being accelerated, the greater the amount of force needed to accelerate the object. The second law gives us an exact relationship between force, mass, and acceleration. It can be expressed as a math and equation. Like this, this example, force equals force equals mass times acceleration. This is the second law of motion by Newton. Newton's third law. For every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. This means that for every force, there is a reaction force that is equal in size but opposite in direction. That is to say that whenever an object pushes another object, get pushed back in the opposite direction equally hard. An aircraft in flight is a particularly good example on the first law of motion. There are four major forces acting on an aircraft, light, weight, thrust, and drag. If we consider the motion of an aircraft at a constant altitude, we can neglect the lift and weight. A cruising aircraft 
flies at a constant air speed and the thrust exactly balances the drag of the aircraft. This is the first part cited in the Newton's first law. There is no net force on the airplane and it travels at a constant velocity in a straight line. Now, if the pilot changes the thrust of the engine, the thrust and drag are no longer in balance. If the thrust is increased, the aircraft accelerates and the velocity increases. This is the second part cited in the Newton's first law. A net external force changes the velocity of the object. The drag of the aircraft depends on the square of the velocity. So the drag increases with increased velocity. Eventually, the new drag equals the new thrust level and at the point, the forces again balance out and the acceleration stops. The airplane continues to fly at a new constant velocity that is higher than the initial velocity. We are again back to the first part of the law with the aircraft traveling at a constant velocity. Remember, this in this simple example that we are only considering the motion of the aircraft in a horizontal direction, we are neglecting any effects of the thrust on weight or on lift. On real aircraft, increasing the throttle setting increases the fuel usage and decreases the weight, and the increased velocity increases the lift as well as the drug. Each of these changes affect the vertical motion of the aircraft, but to simplify our understanding of the Newton's law, we are neglecting these effects in this example. It is important to point out the role of the engine thrust in this example. Thrust is used to accelerate the aircraft to change its velocity, and thrust is used to balance the drug when the aircraft is cruising at a constant velocity. We normally think of only the first roll acceleration. For fighter planes, high thrust is desirable. But some aircraft, like jet airliners, spend most of their existence in cruising flight balancing the drug. In that, in that role, engine efficiency or the low fuel usage is desirable, depending on the mission of the aircraft. Different types of engine are designed to provide high thrust or high efficiency. This time we will proceed to the next proponent which is Daniel Bernoulli. Bernoulli's principle. Daniel Bernoulli is a mathematician. He was born in England on February 8, 1700s. The proponents of Bernoulli's theory he studied the relationship of the speed of a fluid and pressure. Bernoulli's principle. The principle states that the pressure of a fluid or liquid or gas decreases as the speed of the fluid increases. Within the same fluid, air in the example of the aircraft moving through air, high speed flow is associated with low pressure. Mid-low speed flow is associated with high pressure. Bernoulli's principle applies to any fluid and since air is a fluid, it applies to air. The camber of an airfoil causes an increase in the velocity of the air passing over the foil. This results in a decrease in the pressure in the stream of air moving over the top of the airfoil. There are many factors that can affect the lift produced under this principle, but in order to fully understand how and why things can affect flight, one must understand how Bernoulli's principle works. Bernoulli's principle works on the idea that as a wing passes through the air, its shapes make the air travel more over the top of the wing than beneath it. This creates a higher pressure beneath the wing than above it. The pressure difference causes the wing to push upwards and its lift is created. There are several things that can affect the amount of lift created. The first is speed. The faster the wing moves through the air, the more air is forced under the wing through more lift is created. And 
the thing that affects the amount of flip is created the density of the air the denser of the air is more lift is produced this is why planes climb after or climb better in the winter than the colder is the colder air is denser the final thing that can change the amount of lift created by the wing is the shape of the wing certain wings produce more lift this phenomenon applies to the lift produced by the wing of an airplane an airfoil is designed so that the air moves more rapidly over its upper surface than its lower surface, thereby decreasing pressure above the airfoil. At the same time, the impact of the air on the lower surface of the airfoil increases the pressure below the airfoil. This difference between the decreased pressure above and the increased pressure below produces slip. A wing with more curve on the top surface has greater lift than a wing with flat surface. This airplane is designed so that the top is curved and the bottom is flat. Taxiing down the runway, the air blowing over the top of the wing travel faster than the air blowing beneath it. The faster air has a lower pressure, so the greater pressure on the bottom of the wing pushes the plane up. When it gets going fast enough, this lifting pressure exceeds the downward gravity and the move and move the plane upward. The five main components of an aircraft. We have the fuselage, the wings, the empennage, power plant, and landing gear. Let's start with the fuselage. The long hollow tube that holds the passenger and cargo also known as the body of the air, airplane. This is the fuselage, the body of the airplane. The next one is the wings, also known as foils. The wings generate the lifting force needed for flight. The wings are in the middle and the back of the aircraft. Next is the empanage. The tail end of the aircraft is the empanage, which, which help with stability using assistance from the rudder and elevator next one is the power plant the power plant is the engine and propeller make up the power plant this is the engine and the propeller the landing gear a plane can function without a landing gear shocks absorbers and wheels are part of the landing gear those are the five main parts or the main components of an aircraft. This time we will going to discuss the principle of, of how aircraft fly. The aircraft fly with the principles of lift, allowing air to pass below the vehicle while moving at high speed. The engine used in a typical aircraft is a turbojet engine which propel the aircraft to obtain high velocity and as the speed increases the air below the aircraft lift the crop and as, as it reach higher and higher the air pressure becomes more delicate and makes plane an easy flyer for an airplane to fly it must always engage in a tug of war between the opposing forces of lift versus weight and thrust versus drag and the airfoil of the angle of the attack the angle attack is related to the amount lift the greater of the angle of the attack is the greater lift force can be created for a moment think of an airplane moving the right to left and the flow of air moving from left to right the weight or force due to gravity pulls down on the posing the lift created by air flowing over the wing Trust is generated by the propeller and opposes drag caused by air resistance to the airplane during takeoff. Trust must be greater than drag and lift must be greater than weight so that the airplane can become airborne. For landing, trust must be less than drag and lift must be less than weight. There are four forces which act on an aircraft. These are lift, drag, weight, and thrust. 
all must be applied and controlled at the same time in order to make the aircraft fly. When an aircraft moving at high speed, it will create a thrust force. As the engine are attached to the wing of an airplane, its thrust will be applied to the airplane. You can understand in it on Newton's third law. Aircraft have wings which generate lift when air flows over the surface because the faster the air moves through the airspace, the lower the air pressure. The slower it moves, the higher the pressure. See Bernoulli's principle. Aircraft which wing are designed to take advantage of the fact and create a lift force necessary to overcome the weight of aircraft. And because wings are attached to aircraft, the moving on high speed and create the lift force that make the airplane lift upward and fly. The last topic that I will discuss today is the emerging technology that are reshaping the flying experience for the airline industry. I have here 10. The first one is the blockchain technology. Given the popularity gained by the blockchain technology in the financial sector, it is seeing a wide range of application in other industries as well. Airline industry has just started releasing the potential of blockchain in various aspects. Recently, Air France talked about how they are looking at blockchain technology in improving business process and improving workflows. How is it, how, uh, here is how airlines can use blockchain technology to improve operational efficiencies, security system, and even customer experiences. By implementing blockchain technology, airlines can do away with the need to rely on physical ID proofs by saving passengers' data maintained in a virtual decentralized database which can be as accessed by relevant people. It can help in turning flying miles into a more valuable asset which can be used to give added benefits to the customers by token, tokenizing these points and offering them a chance to accrue these points through a community partners. Blockchain can be extremely useful in building a, rob a robust security system for a managing customer data. The next one is augmented reality and virtual reality. Industries like re retail, healthcare, etc. are seeing a lot of costs, a lot of uses of the AR and VR revolution. Airlines industry is also fo following suit. Right now, one of the most obvious applications of the technologies can be expected to be seen in the airport space where the airport experience can be enhanced with the help of AR, VR based apps. The third one is the artificial intelligence. With AI gaining tractions, industries are using it to upgrade customer experience at every touch point, from chatbots to voice based. AI tools, there are up umpteen use cases of AI being utilized. The airline industry understands the power of AI or the artificial intelligence in helping them stepping up their technology gain. A lot of forward-thinking airlines understand the impact of AI can have the multiple areas of the industry and are already investing in the same. For example, the UK-based EasyJet is using AI for predicted analysis. The airline using combination of this technology to make sense of all available data and use these insights to create offers and services personalized for individual travelers. The airline also has a recognition tool that reads passport and fills out all the information for flyers, easing of the data entry and the management of tax management task more manageable. EasyJet Korean Air is also exploring how voice activate, activated digital assist can help in offering a seamless travel experience. The fourth one is the Beacons technology. Beacons technology has seen a lot of success when it comes to retail 
and there is a huge potential for the airline industry to use beacons in making navigation easy for travelers between different terminals at the airport. Further, beacons can help airports and vendors at the airport's premises to know where passengers are and then send them personal, personalized and relevant information accordingly. These updates can be about boarding gate number, baggage carousel, flight status, or also about the shops and eateries around the customer. Miami International Airport is already leveraging beacons in its premises to create personalized experience for the travelers. The app provides information about the entire airport as travelers navigate through various places at the premises. Further, they also updated with relevant information depending on their individual journey. For example, the gate numbers, flight updates, baggage collection details. The fifth one is the robotics. The airline industry is also using robotics in assisting with various tasks like customer management, baggage handling, car parking, for example, car parking, etc. For example, the introduction of KLM's social aware Spencer robot last year created a lot of buzz. This robot has been equipped with the capability to deal with the social situation between people and can see and analyze people nearby with his sensors. Spencer can also distinguish between individuals, families, and larger groups and also learns about and then complies with social rules, ultimately acting in a human-friendly way. Next one is the biometrics. The airline industry is consistently working towards making travel experience delightful and comfortable for the customers. Adopting the biometrics technology at airlines and airport touch points is one of such attempts by the industry. Back in 2015, the biometrics trial was launched with the Happy Flow project, aptly named this project aimed at creating a seamless and secure air travel process. In just two years today, a lot of biometrics enabled single token platforms had been introduced, and airlines and airports are leveraging them to revolutionize passengers' experience. For example, Air New Zealand has launched a biometric enabled bag drop to speed up the check in process. Recently, Delta Airlines went a step ahead and launched the world's first self service biometric enabled baggage drop to free up free up more Delta people to deal with customers. Next one is the wearable technology. Airlines have started to use wearable technologies in various ways. To do more than improving customer service on flights, some of the examples of airlines using wearable technology are Recently, Japan Airlines used Microsoft HoloLens for training its new crew members and engineers Using HoloLens, the mechanics can be trained about engine mechanics akin to experience they will have working on an actual plane. EasyJet and British Airways are among the airlines to have created apps for the Apple Watch, enabling passengers to store boarding passes and receive real-time updates on their wrist. Next one is the Internet of Things. Over the course of the de next decade, it is like that all things on the board will be connected and the health of everything from engine performance to the IFE system will be monitored in real time. Sensors will automatically detect and report faults to maintenance teams on the ground, removing the need for the crew to manually report the faults. Moreover, the addition of sensors to aircraft seats will enable the crew to monitor individual passenger health and well-being and to proactively respond to their needs. Virgin Airlines have implemented IoT in its Boeing 787. Every single element on the plane is attached to a wireless aerop aeroplane network providing real-time IoT data and elements like performance and maintenance. The airline is using the del deluge data that is collecting through these flights to improve the efficiency of the aircraft and also being proactive. 
Next is the big data and anal analytic analytics. Airlines can be drive valuable insights by analyzing the vast amount of data available to them to create delightful experience for travelers. Understand customer preference in real time based on the data of their purchase history, travel itineraries, etc., and provide them customized offers, etc. For example, United Airlines uses a smart collect detect app system to analyze around 150 variables in the customer profile, including their previous purchase, preferences, etc., and provide tailor made offers to them. United Airlines has seen a YOY revenue increase of 15% after the implementation of this system. Further, this data can also help in increasing the operational efficiency through predictive analytics. Southwest Airlines has partnered with NASA to indicate the potential safety issues by using machine learning algorithms. They have built an automated capable of crunching vast data sets to warn about the anomalies and to prevent potential accidents. The last one is the mobile solution. Today, smartphones have become an integral part of the people's life. Airlines have started venturing into the world of mobile solution and are using this platform to connect with their customers throughout the passenger journey, starting from booking of a flight till deplaning it. For example, Delta Airlines recently started providing their passenger virtual boarding passes 24 hours before their journey through their mobile app, easing out the check-in process for their passengers. As the conclusion, that's the basic principle on how aircraft fly. We learn from Newton's gravitation that anything heavier than air will drop to the ground when released. But when we apply the Bernoulli's principle on the aircraft, it can take the jumbo jet weighing 400 ton can fly and it doesn't drop to the ground. Of course, there are certain calculations need to be done. But first you need to understand the rules and principle of flying that I've been described in this topic. Let me summarize it for better understanding. For a moment, think of an airplane moving from a right to left and the flow of air moving from left to right. The four forces which act on the aircraft, these are lift, drag, weight, and thrust. As the aircraft gains speed, that created by the engine, that created thrust, force, see chapter Newton, third law of motion, the air passes faster and faster over its wing and lift force it creates. See chapters Bernoulli's principle and cause the engine is attached to the wing and the wing is attached to the aircraft. Fuselage carried by the aircraft fly in the sky. So about the matter of aircraft weight or the gravity, the calculation need to be done using the lift formula according to the major part of the airplane. Primary control surface, additional control surface, and the engine power. Lift force must be greater than the plane's weight and thrust force must be greater than the drag force to make the aircraft fly and doesn't drop to the ground. All four, four, four forces must be applied and controlled at the same time. Once a plane is in the air, it continues to climb and reaches the cruising altitude which is determined by the pilot and approved by the ATC. At this point, power is reduced from the sailing that was needed to climb and the aircraft maintains a consistent level of attitude to fly level. The weight of the aircraft and the lifting force is generated by the wings and exactly equal. That is all about the aviation. I hope you learn and let me end my discussion with this quote. Believe you can and you're already halfway there. That's all and this is Prelisa A. Rivera 
signing off and I would like to thank everyone for listening.